Good morning and welcome to church. We are so honored that you've joined us today. We want you to encounter Jesus in your living room or wherever it is that you are streaming our service today. So engage, stand up during worship, follow along with the notes, and let Jesus transform your life as you join into service with us this morning. So let's stand up now and press into worship. I was buried beneath my shame Who could carry that kind of weight? It was my turn Till I met him I was breathing but not alive My failures I tried to hide It was my turn Till I met you You called my name And I ran out of that grave Out of the darkness Into your glorious day Now your mercy has saved my soul Now your freedom is all that I know The old made new Jesus when I met you And I ran out of that grave Out of the darkness Into your glorious day You called my name And I ran out of that grave Out of the darkness Into your glorious day sin was heavy but chains break at the weight of your glory I needed shelter I was an orphan now you call me a citizen of heaven when I was broken you were my healing now your love is the end that I'm breathing I have a future my eyes are open it's when you call my name out of the darkness into your glorious day you call my name and I ran out of that grave out of the darkness into your glorious day Darkness to your glory. 
glorious day. stars they wept the morning sun was dead the savior of the world was fallen his body on the cross his blood poured out for us the weight of every curse upon
cross has the final word. The cross has the final word. Sorrow may come in the darkest night. The cross has the final word. The cross has the final word. The cross has the final word. Evil may put up its strongest fight. The cross has the Fine word.
may your light shine so bright that the darkness around us would not be able to comprehend it, Lord. That's what happened at the beginning when you were soaring over the waters, Lord. You were the light of all men. The darkness could not comprehend it. That that would be the same today, Lord. We know that you are the light of all men and that we shine your light, Lord. So I pray that we as believers, as Christians in this season would stand in our identities in you, Lord. That wherever we go, Father, that the darkness wouldn't be able to comprehend the light that we bring, Lord. The darkness wouldn't be able to comprehend the love that we bring, the love of Jesus. That, Father, this Easter morning, Lord, that the message of Jesus his death and resurrection and his blood covering all sin would shine, Lord, from our lives. That it would shine from our lives, Lord. That we would shine for our neighbors. That we would shine for the people that we're shopping with in this season, Lord. Though it may not be many out there right now, Father, as everybody's in their homes, Lord, the few people that we do come across, Lord, that we could shine that we would use this season of shining in every realm, Lord, physical and digital even, Father. That's one of the main ways, Lord, that we are shining as believers right now, Father. We thank you that you are moving. You are moving mightily across the globe, mightily across this nation. You're not limited. You're not limited. sing that one more time. The cross has the final word. Not darkness. The cross has the final word. No disease. He, he traded death for eternal life. The cross has the final word. One more time. The cross has the final word. The cross has the final word. Oh, the Savior came. Savior has come. The morning light. The cross has the final word. Oh, the Savior. The Savior has come with the morning light. The cross has the final word. Come on, declare that over you. The Savior has come with the morning light. The cross has the final word. love you this morning, Father. We thank you that you died and rose again. We thank you, Lord, that you meet us. Meet us. You're so faithful to us, Lord. We thank you for your grace and your mercy. Forgiveness that covers all sin. If there's anybody watching out there that has never received Jesus, I want to invite you in this moment, wherever you're watching, to just lay your heart before the Father, lay your heart before God, before Jesus. Lay your hands out if you need to as a physical representation. And just repeat after me. And mean this with your heart. Jesus, I receive the sacrifice that you made for me receive your blood as forgiveness for my sins, for the things that I've done, for the way that I've lived. Jesus, Jesus, I pray that you would be the Lord over my life. Be the Lord over my life. It's no longer me controlling my life, taking control over it, leading my own life, but Jesus, I give you, I give you the the ability to take everything. Be the Lord. Be the one that guides my life. I surrender to you in Jesus' name. I surrender to you. Thank you, Jesus. 
Thank you, Lord. If that's you, I just encourage you to just message us on Facebook or uh, wherever. And uh, let us know that you prayed that prayer. Let us know that you received the Lord in your life. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Happy Easter! All of our kids have been working so hard on the Easter performance. And unfortunately, because of the circumstances, we've had to move everything online. And they've worked even harder to put together this film for you guys. and Kipfo Jr., we know the truth. So we want to let you into our not-so-little secret. Now, now, I know what you're probably thinking. We are not crazy. We just love Jesus and wouldn't want you to miss out on the truth we found his word. Okay. Let's open up our Bible and see what it has to say about this right here in Mark 16, it says that Mary Magdalene and Jesus' mother were walking to the tomb where Jesus was buried and noticed that the huge stone that once stood guard was rolled away. Inside the tomb they saw a young man dressed in white. Don't be alone, the man said. You are looking for Jesus who was crucified. He is risen. He is not here. Wait a minute, guy. What crucified mean? Here in the offer dictionary, crucified means put somebody to death by getting or binding them to a cross. And that's exactly what they did to Jesus. You see, we were sinners and needed a perfect sacrifice to be made right in relationship with God. Jesus became that sacrifice so that we would no longer be bound in sin and that we could spend an eternity with Him. Wow! That's great news for us! Also, great news for you guys at home. He just lived a perfect life, for, died as a sacrifice for our sins, and then rose up from the dead. That's exactly right. If Jesus is raised from the dead, where is he now? At the right hand of the Father, he's up in heaven. You guys, I think that we should let them know how this all relates to Easter. All right, can we Easter to the day we celebrate Jesus rising from the dead, our sins are forgiven. We are able to start a king that's alive. He's victorious. See you guys. You told me not crazy. If you still don't believe us, you should read the Bible for yourself. I see there's no Easter eggs in that book. And I'm thankful for that. So remember, Jesus is the reason for the season. Happy Easter, everyone. Miss you. I want to encourage you with this today. So many times we get stuck in our heads that we're only going to have finances through our jobs. But Jesus can do great things. I've seen it in my life, I've seen it in the lives of others, and I know He will do it for you too. So put your hope in Him, put your trust in Him, and partner with Jesus, and watch Him provide all of your needs. If you'd stand with me now, let's do our declarations. Jesus, we are believing for heaven open and earth invaded, positions and promotions, provisions and resources, jobs and better jobs, raises and bonuses, benefits and commissions, estates and inheritances, interest and income, rebates and returns, gifts and surprises, checks in the mail, binding money, debts paid off, expenses decrease, blessing and increase. Let's pray this morning. 
God, we thank you that you are reliable and we can count on you. We know that you can meet all of our needs and you provide more than we can even ask or imagine, God. So we partner with you. We put our trust and our hope in you, Jesus. And we know that testimonies will come of your provision in this season. In Jesus' name, amen. If you need ministry this morning, please message us on our Facebook page and one of our pastoral staff will reach out to you. Also, you can stay connected with the app this morning. You can follow along with the notes, you can give on there, and you can also use the app throughout the week to listen to old podcasts or worship. Thank you so much for joining us today, and I know Pastor Josh is going to bring an amazing message that's going to bless you. Let's dive in. Well, happy Easter. We're so honored that you would take time out of your day to be with us and super excited about all the incredible things that God is doing in your life. We know that our nation is experiencing a lot of chaos, but I am grateful that we serve a God who provides peace in the midst of of chaos. Hey, before we get into the message today, I just want to let you know at the end of the message, we are going to be having communion. So go ahead and get some elements that you can take communion with. It can be bread and wine. It can be juice and crackers. It can be cookies and milk. It can be tortillas and Fanta. Whatever it is that you need to have communion there with your family at the end of today's message, go ahead and grab that. And we are going to just celebrate the resurrected Jesus today. That's what Easter is all about. Jesus alive. Jesus resurrected. Jesus, the great grave robber. And that's what we're talking about today. About uh, several weeks ago in February, we started this series called Thieves and Robbers. And we kind of got away from that because of the chaos and, and all that's going on. But I really felt like we needed to jump back in to this series. And I thought, man, what a what a better day to get back into it than talking about the great robber of all robbers, Jesus, the one who robbed the grave. And that's what Jesus does. Jesus robs graves. And during his ministry, Jesus actually experienced four resurrections. Four uh, different individuals are resurrected. One is a widow's son. Another one is Jairus' daughter. And then we know the great story of Lazarus. In fact, I want to I want to dig in a little bit today on the story of Lazarus. And this is found in John chapter 11. If you're following along today, you can follow along in the overflow app and the, the notes section there. You can follow along in your Bible. You can follow along here on the screen. But I want to talk about Lazarus and his story is found in John chapter 11. And it says this, that Jesus found out that his friend Lazarus got sick. And I love it that Jesus had friends outside of the disciples, outside of his core. He had this, this family that he is in a relationship with. It was Lazarus and his sisters, Mary and Martha. And Lazarus got sick, and he's about to die. We know this story. But Jesus isn't worried about it. People are coming to him and they're saying, listen, Lazarus is sick. Jesus knows Lazarus is sick. Jesus knows what's going to happen. Uh, but Jesus makes this statement. It's kind of like he's saying, He's okay. He's okay. I know he's sick, but, but he's okay. He, this sickness will not end in death. It's kind of like he was saying, I know he's sick, but it's not going to kill him. And we've been told that before, right? We think we're going to die. And Jesus is making this statement, but the, but the story goes on to say that Lazarus actually dies. And Jesus know this, knows this is going to happen. And Jesus tells the disciples, hey, he's, he's fallen asleep. 
And they're like, well, if he sleeps, maybe he'll get better. And Jesus is like, you don't understand. He's actually dead. So they decide to go where the dead body of Lazarus is. And we see this in John chapter 11, verse 17. On his arrival, he found that Lazarus had already been in the tomb for four days. Bethany was less than two miles from Jerusalem. And many Jews had come to Martha and Mary to comfort them and the loss of their brother. When Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went out to meet him, but Mary stayed at home. Lord, Martha said to Jesus, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. We've, we've seen the miracles that you performed. If you would have been here, then, then Lazarus would have experienced the miracle that he needed, but you weren't here. But I know even now that God will give whatever you ask. Immediately, she's placing faith in Jesus. Jesus said to her, your brother will rise again. Very important to Martha. Your brother will rise again. And Martha answered, I know he'll rise again in the resurrection at the last day. And Jesus said to her, I am. I love this. I am the resurrection. I am the resurrection and the life. And he who believes in me will live even though he dies. And whoever lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? So the story goes on to say that she went and she called her sister Mary. And Jesus is, is experiencing this intense moment with these sisters, this intense moment of, of comforting them, and they're weeping together, and they're crying. One translation actually says that Jesus was angry. So there's this, this tense moment. It says that Jesus was deeply moved. He was troubled just about the whole scenario. And many have speculated what Jesus was talking about. Was he, was he sad because of their unbelief? Was he, was he sad because it was Lazarus' friend? I don't know why he was sad, but I know that Jesus was sad. And Jesus was, was, was weeping. It actually says in verse 35 that Jesus wept. And when he did that, some Jews were there and they were like, look how much he loved Lazarus. He, he loves Lazarus so much that even Jesus is crying that he died. And they, they said, couldn't he have, have healed him? I mean, he's healed the blind. Couldn't he have healed Lazarus? So it's this intense moment. It's a sad moment that Jesus is in. And I love that in the midst of the sadness and the mourning, Jesus is there to bring comfort. But doesn't it seem that Jesus was a little late to the party? I mean, Jesus is showing up late. Not fashionably late, like way late, days late. Dead late. But what I love about Jesus is even when it seems like he's late, he's right on time. And, and I like to think of this story like those Marvel movies they make. You know, at the end of the movie, it's not the end of the movie. You actually have to sit through the credits to get to the end of the movie. And, and this is like that scenario. Jesus is there. And they think it's the end of the movie, but Jesus knows it isn't the end of the movie. He, he knows that after the credits roll, after everybody's kind of dismissed, everybody thought it's over, Jesus says, it's not over. Yeah. It's not over. There's a, another scene. There's another segment to this story. But will you stay here long enough to experience the second part of the story? In John chapter 11, verse 38, the story continues. It says that Jesus was deeply moved. It was an emotional moment. Hebrews tells us that, that Jesus is able to sympathize with our weakness. That he actually cares, that he's actually in it with us. And so here's Jesus deeply moved, and he comes to the tomb. I, I like to think that Jesus was walking up to the tomb and rolling up his sleeves. He's ready to go to work. It's time. It's go time. It's time to reveal the glory of God. And Jesus is about to perform a miracle. And he says this in verse 39, take away the stone. But Lord, Martha said. Now, Jesus has already been speaking to Martha about this. this she says this, by, the time, by this time, there is a bad odor. Jesus, don't get too close. Don't get too close. He's stinky. He's been in there four days. He's, he's swollen up. He's, he, he's gross. You know, it, it, you don't want to go in there. But Jesus says, roll away. This, I'm willing to go in there. He doesn't have to go in there, but he's willing. But Jesus said, did I not tell you? 
Did I not tell you? Martha, I just told you. Did I not just tell you that if you believed, you would see the glory of God? Even when it seems too late. Four days too late. Four weeks too late. Four years too late. Sometimes we need to get off our timeline and get on to his timeline. He is never late. Even in something as final as death, he is never late. Jesus shows up to a funeral and says, hold up. It's not over yet. There's another part of this story. There's a new chapter. And I would suggest this to you today, that it's not over yet. Maybe this chapter is over. Maybe this part of the story is over. Maybe this episode is over, but you're not finished. Your story continues. No matter where you're at in your life, even in death, your story continues if you're in him. The story continues in verse 41. It says, so they took away the stone. Then Jesus looked up and said, Father, I thank you that you have heard me. I knew that you always hear me, but I say this for the benefit of those standing here, that they may believe that you sent me. When he said this, he called out in a loud voice. It wasn't like you've seen on the poor portrayals of Jesus in these movies, Lazarus. No, it says in a loud voice, Lazarus, come forth, come out. Now, many have suggested that if Jesus didn't say specifically Lazarus, that you would have had all the dead people in the region awakening. That if Jesus just said, come forth, come out of your grave, the dead people everywhere would have arose. But Jesus says specifically, Lazarus, come out. So he comes out and his hands and feet are wrapped with stri- strips of linen and cloth around his face. And Jesus says, take off the grave clothes. The old translations say, loose him and let him go. So Jesus resurrects Lazarus. And we'll hit on this story again in just a moment. Another resurrection that we see with Jesus is the resurrection of himself, his own body. Did you know that Jesus rose himself from the dead? Many say, whoa, 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 wait a second. Doesn't the Bible say that God the Father rose him? Yes, it does. It says that in in Acts chapter 2, verse 24, it says the Father rose him from the dead. Doesn't it say in Romans chapter 8 that the Spirit of God went into the dead body and rose him from the dead? Yes, it does say that. So the Father raised Jesus, the Spirit raised Jesus, but also Jesus rose Jesus. This is in John chapter 2, verse 19. Jesus said, destroy this temple, speaking of himself. And he says, in three days, I will raise it back up. Jesus says in John chapter 10, I have the authority to lay my life down and to take it up. So who raised Jesus? Was it the Father? Was it the Spirit? Or was it Jesus? Yes, it was God, just like in creation, just like every move of God, the whole Trinity, the whole Godhead is engaged. God is totally in it. And this is what we see when Jesus raises himself from the dead. The entire Godhead, just like every move of God. He says in Revelation chapter 1, verse 18, Jesus says, I am the living one. I died. But look, I am alive forever, and I am holding the keys of death in the grave. I have authority over death. Therefore, I could not stay in the grave because I have authority over death. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 1. This is the gospel. If you ever want to know the story of the gospel, it's right here. 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Great explanation. This is Paul. He says, let me... Let me now remind you, dear brothers and sisters, of the good news, the gospel that I preached to you before. You welcomed it then, and you still remain firm in it. This is the gospel. I'm reminding you, this is the good news that saves you. If you continue to believe the message I told you, unless, of course, you believe something that was never true in the first place. I passed it on to you, what was the most important And what had also been passed on to me, and here it is. Here's the gospel. Christ died for our sins, just as the scripture said. He was buried, 
And he was raised from the dead on the third day, just as the scriptures say. He was seen by Peter and then by the twelve. After that, he was seen by more than 500 of his followers at one time, most of whom are still alive, though some have died. Then he was seen by James and later by the apostles. And last of all, and I love how Paul includes this. He's like, listen, we have all the evidence. We have all the evidence. We have all the eyewitnesses. He's alive. There's an empty tomb. With, it's all laid out. The gospel is true. But last of all, he revealed himself to me as, all the, as though I had been born at the wrong time. I also saw him. I also saw him. I also experienced the gospel. I also experienced the resurrected Christ. Have you experienced Christ alive? Christ, the hope of glory. Have you experienced the risen Jesus? Because the only way that he can resurrect you is if you experience him. So, he resurrected Lazarus, he re resurrected himself, and he resurrects us. Jesus is the resurrection, and he resurrects us. And just like he said to Lazarus that day, he's saying to you today, come out. Come out of your grave. Come out of the, the sticky places, the ugly places of life. Out of the place that you're in. Out of the, the place of death. Out of the place of mediocrity. Come out. Come out of your current reality and come into his. See, Jesus, what I love about Jesus is he doesn't just revive the old. When we think about resurrection, when we, we talk about coming out of this, this COVID thing, when we talk about coming back into our normal lives, we think, I just want it to be the way it was. But that's not the way Jesus works. Jesus doesn't restore things to the way they were. Jesus restores things to better than they were. See, he doesn't revive you into your old life. He brings you into a new life. And this is what he did with us. We have to die. We have to experience a death in order to experience a rebirth. See, he doesn't revive you into your old life. He brings you into a new life. And today, he is calling you. He's calling you. He's saying, come out. Come out of your grave and come into grace. Come out of the grave and come into grace. Come into what I've set before you. Come into this new life. Come out, just like he told Lazarus. The second thing that he's saying to you today with those resurrection words are this. Remove the grave clothes. See, some of you have, have come out. You've experienced the Lord. You've encountered the Lord, but you still look like death. What's holding on to you? What are you holding on to? What keeps you looking dead? What keeps you defeated? What, what is robbing you of hope? What is robbing you of joy? What is robbing you of peace? What's robbing you? Jesus wants to take off those grave clothes. And I believe today is the day that you're being loosed. I believe all over the world today, as the gospel's preached all over the internet, all over the world today, I believe that people are being set free. I believe grave clothes are falling off. I believe today that you, you that are watching, yes, you, that you are being loosed. You're being loosed from addictions. You're being loosed from bondage. You're being loosed from unforgiveness. You're being re re released from broken mindsets, from insecurities, from depression, from sickness, from emotional sickness, to physical sickness, to spiritual sickness. Jesus is setting you free today. He is getting rid of the grave in you. And he's removing the stench and he's removing the grave clothes. I love that Jesus didn't just remove death from us. He actually removed the sting of death, the power of death. It says in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, death has been swallowed up in victory. Death has been swallowed up in victory. Where, oh, death? Where? Where is your victory? Where? Where, oh, death, is your sting? See, Jesus sees death as temporary. Jesus sees death as temporary. This is what he, what he said about Lazarus. This will not end in death. He's just sleeping. It's temporary. He's going to wake up. When I show up on the scene, he's going to wake up. See, life on earth, no matter how great it is, it's temporary. 
but life in Jesus is permanent. It's permanent. It's forever. It's eternal. But the problem is, is we have this issue called sin and death. And sin, Isaiah teaches us this, that sin separates us from God. Sin hinders us from experiencing the life that Jesus offers. Romans 3.23, all of sin. You say, well, I'm not a sinner. I mean, I'm, I'm not the best. I'm no Mother Teresa. No. But Mother Teresa isn't the standard. Jesus is the standard. And it says this in Romans 3.23, that all have sinned. Yes, you, me, we've all sinned. We've all fallen short of God's glorious grace. None of us are fit for the grace of God. Romans 6.23 says that, that the wages of sin is death, but the gift. The wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life, permanent life in Christ Jesus. See, sin is powerful. Sin is extremely powerful. But Jesus is greater. Jesus is stronger than sin. Jesus is stronger than than death. I love Romans 5, 8. But God demonstrated his love towards us while we were sinners, while we were unfit for it. That while we were sinners, Christ died for us. Why did Christ die? For you to rob the grave in your life. To rob the grave that you've been living in. To rob the, the holding position of life, the survival mindset. Jesus came to rob you of that. And to give you something much greater. And the way you get into that, Paul tells us in Romans chapter 10, verse 9 and 10, that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus, that you believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. You will be brought in to the life that God has promised. So today, I want to invite you I want to invite you to meet the risen, real Jesus. I want to invite you to encounter not a man written in pages, not a historical figure, but a resurrected king who is madly in love with you, who wants to be in your daily life, who wants to be with you through the thick and through the thin, he wants to be with you when it's good. He wants to be with you when it's rough. Jesus wants to be with you. So what I would like for you to do today is just ask you to, to bow your head and close your eyes and, and search your heart right now in this moment. And just ask the Lord, Lord, am I right with you? And you probably already know the answer to that question, are you right with God? Are you right with God? If you were to stand before a holy God today, and he said, why should I let you in to heaven? Why should you live forever? What would your answer be? What would your answer be? I'm here to tell you today the good news is the answer is not about how good you've been or how well behaved you are, but it's because Jesus took the sting out of death, yes. that Jesus paid the penalty for your sins. And so we want to pray this today. And if that's you today, I want you just to invite Jesus into your life because he's inviting you into his. And would you just say this today? Would you just say, Jesus, I confess that I've sinned, that I've sinned against God, that I've sinned against heaven. And Lord, today, I believe that what Jesus did was enough. And I pray today that you would forgive me of my sins and cleanse me 
of all the junk I've done wrong and bring me into your kingdom. I receive your righteousness in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Amen. If you prayed that prayer with us today, I'm going to encourage you to, to send us a message. Let us know. Hey, I prayed that prayer today. We would love to get in contact with you and, and walk through the next steps, what it looks like to have a relationship, a real relationship with a resurrected Christ. And today, as we're finishing up, we wanted to, to have a time of communion right there in your living room with your family. How appropriate. And so as you've gathered those elements and you have those elements before you, when we take communion, we're, we're remembering two things. We're remembering two things. We're remembering that Jesus spilt his blood, that he died for us, that he suffered for us on that Good Friday, that he paid the price for our sins. It's the blood of the new covenant for the forgiveness of sins. And then we have the bread, which represents the body of Jesus. Whatever your elements are today, that you look at that bread and you say, you know what, this represents the body of Jesus that was broken for me, that I may experience life, that my grave would be robbed by the life-giving power of Jesus. And I believe today that when we take these elements, I believe that something is going to happen supernatural. I th I'm looking forward to reports coming in of people being healed from diseases and sickness, of people being set free from bad mindsets or, or have memories that have been holding on to them for decades. I believe today is the day, the new day, the new chapter. And as we take these, there's nothing magic about these, these elements but there is something powerful about what Jesus did. And there is something extremely powerful about us remembering those things. And so today, Lord, we thank you for your body that was broken. Yes, Lord. I pray in the name of Jesus, Lord, today that you would heal brokenness. We thank you that you are broken for us. So, Lord, we take the bread today in remembrance of you. And Lord, we thank you for your blood that was shed. We thank you, Lord, that we can experience the new life and the new covenant because you spilled your blood. Yes. Because we can be before a holy God with forgiveness, eternal forgiveness. Because of the blood of Jesus. We thank you. We honor you in Jesus' name. Amen. Father, we love you. We thank you for giving us Jesus. Lord, I pray for every home, for every family, Lord, that you would strengthen them. Strengthen them, Lord, with your power, by your spirit. In the mighty name of Jesus, we love you. We love you, Lord. Amen. Thank you so much for joining us today. Please let us know. Let us know that you are here. Let us know that you've been encouraged today. We are going to continue just doing the very best we can for encouraging you. We love you. We miss you. And we can't wait to be together again. Happy Easter. I hope that you are blessed with our service this morning. We want to connect with you, so please message us if you need ministry or attend one of our other services like The Furnace on Saturday will be live streamed and we're still meeting with our groups through the Zoom app. If you need more information, please email or text the church. We can't wait to connect with you heart to heart.
Happy Easter! Parents, we need your help. Take a picture of your children's artwork and post it on your Instagram story tagging Overflow DFW. We look forward to seeing your masterpieces and to interacting with you on social media. The story of Easter, Jesus' sacrifice. This is Jesus, hey who is the Son of God and the Savior of the world. While Jesus was on earth, he taught everyone about God's love and healed people from their sickness. He did many miracles like calming storms, and even raised people from the dead. The Jewish leaders and teachers did not like what Jesus was doing or how he claimed to be the Son of God. And so they made a plan to arrest him to get rid of him once and for all. Judas, one of Jesus' disciples, agreed to betray Jesus Come in, come in. And give him over to the religious leaders for some money. Jesus was in a garden praying, and Judas showed the man who Jesus was. Jesus was arrested and taken to the rulers of the land so that they could decide what to do with him. Jesus was presented before the high council, and they asked him if he was the Messiah, the Savior of the Jews. They asked him if he was claiming to be the Son of God. You say that I am. And the council was furious and they shouted that Jesus was guilty and he deserves to die. So they took Jesus before the Roman ruler Pilate and he heard the case against Jesus. Pilate didn't think that Jesus had done anything wrong. Huh, seemed okay to me. They found him to be innocent, so Pilate said, that he would punish Jesus and then release him. But the crowd kept screaming louder and louder, crucify him, we want him dead. And because of the pressure of the crowd, Pilate turned Jesus over to the Roman soldiers to be crucified. Jesus was hurt and spit on, his clothes were torn and taken from him, and a crown made out of thorns was put on his head. He was beaten so badly that he could barely stand on his own, and then he was forced to carry his cross so far up a mountain that he needed help because he could not do it on his own. Once Jesus made it to the place where he would be crucified, called the skull, the soldiers around him nailed him to the cross and waited for him to die. While Jesus was hanging on the cross, many people shouted to him, If you really are the Son of God, save yourself from the cross. But Jesus knew he had to die to forgive his people for their sins. At noon, darkness fell across the whole land. Three hours later, Jesus took his last breath and finally died. At that very moment, the curtain in the temple that separated the priests from God's holy place tore in two. A soldier watching the whole thing said, This man truly was the Son of God. Then a righteous man named Joseph came and placed Jesus' body in a tomb. Three days passed and it seemed that there was no hope. But very early on Sunday morning, the woman who cared for Jesus went to go visit his body and found that his tomb was empty and that he was no longer there. Ah! Don't be afraid, said an angel. He is not here. He is risen. At this, the woman remembered that Jesus had told them that he would rise again on the third day and ran to go tell the disciples what they had seen and heard. Huh? Hey-oh! Ah! 
And then for the next 40 days, Jesus appeared to his disciples and many others and showed them that he was alive and well. He taught them that what he did was the only way that they could be forgiven and be with God forever. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son so that everyone who believes in him will not perish but have eternal life.